Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Today we'll be doing some 3D modeling, so let's dive right in. So the last couple of days I've been working on a new model. The, the model was based upon a castle I've made almost 10 years ago. Uh, I thought, well, I should have improved over the years, so let's see how much I have improved. Um, so let's first take the original model over here. And let's take a look. Um, the initial model was made using 3ds Max with the purpose of making a V-Ray render of an exterior. And, um, well, I succeeded. <laughs> uh, it was way too ambitious. Uh, a big, huge ass open environment with loads of details everywhere uh, in a small, limited amount of time. Um, but anyway, I've managed to get this render out and I was really proud of it back then and uh, it, it remained one of my highlight portfolio pieces for some time. Um, if you take a look at it now, you can totally pick it apart on every single detail. Um, especially the model itself, if I review it right now, is that the model is screwed at some places. Detail is in the wrong areas, uh, some of the bigger meshes are way too low poly. And if you look at the finish with the materials, uh, even though they are the same material type, they come out different due to the lighting and the material setup. So that's one of the big areas I wanted to improve. And uh, the difference I'm gonna take is that I looked at the original concept art for this castle and took some liberties with the designs to make it a little bit more detailed uh, all over. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the new one I've made last week. First things first, I uh, took the original designs and made some notes for myself, like um, what are the main details that I want to highlight in my model, um, how can I do this uh, without actually burying myself in work because I'm on a limited schedule, and uh, how can I maximize the results. So the, one of the first things I saw is that the original design has a lot of repetitive um, designs, so the towers, the spires, the the domes, the, the decals, um, they seem to be copy placed all over the place so I thought if I just like make a few of those I can quickly use that uh, single mesh as a prefab to build the whole castle. Uh, so I did just that, I um, figured that I wanted to focus on the main tower itself with the additional tower and the bridge and put most of my time in there as the centerpiece of the uh, model. So in Maya, I restricted myself from using my original mesh as a reference. I only used the concept art and the re final render of my first model to use as a reference. Uh, I start from scratch laying out some foundations. I always start with a, a cube that's one by one by one and a cube that's one by two by one. Uh, that way I know roughly the skill of a human being and like what one meter is in my scene. Um, that way, if I go into Unity, I can also check the skill really easily with a default cube. Because um, the default cube in Unity is one by one by one, then I have a good reference if the model is imported correctly. Um, so after that, I just start laying out some basic shapes to get the overall volume and size. And um, yeah, I start meshing in details. Um, one of the first areas that I want to focus on is the heart shaped window and the bigger windows. because. If I had one window, I could basically copy paste them all over the over the scene and uh, get results very quickly. And as I was modeling the tower, I kind of figured that I was on a too strict of schedule to get this one really completed at time uh, in time. So I'm really happy that I have a rough model. Uh, finished. So for me my workflow is really important that I go into Unity as soon as I can. So when I modeled the tower uh, I immediately exported it to see the size uh, in Unity, uh, match some lighting and uh, see how the end result is going to look like. Because sometimes I struggle to see the end result in Maya itself. Um, if you need help with setting up your Unity HDRP scene, I've made a tutorial uh, covering just that with my friends over at Binary Impact. I'll leave the link down below. It's a great video to show you how you can set up your HDRP scene. Uh, I've used uh, the same steps to set up this scene and light it uh, to get a natural result. Um, that's why I use the HDRP instead of the URP or other uh, setup in Unity, because I want those um, pretty bright 
uh, sunlights and uh, some light shafts in there to make it a little bit more aesthetic. So after I modeled a part of the castle, I started to experiment with some uh, materials. Um, I figured I wanted to do some custom materials, but I wanted to get as much texture in there uh, as soon as I could. So I made some tileable materials in Substance Alchemist, which is really awesome. It will have results very quickly. It's so versatile. It can export a different color uh, or a different pattern with just a click of a button. and. Yeah, it, it's a really great tool to help uh, get uh, seamless, startable textures without a, too much of a repetitive pattern. And I figured that because I'm on the time schedule, uh, I wanted to have the base plaster of the walls uh, as neutral as possible. So you get details in there uh, and you won't see the patterns. And with all these, all these walls, it's quite difficult to get that right. But uh, with Substance Alchemist, I managed to get a great base material out. I made the trim around the towers with a custom material as well with a custom mask uh, to get the shape I wanted in the in the, in the tower trim uh, the roof is downloaded from substance source if you don't know about substance source it has loads of materials in its library uh, at your disposal which you can download if you're subscribed and it will help you get results very quickly they have like cloth wood, metal, uh, anything you can think of. So I use it mostly for really complex materials, so it will save me some time. Uh, although I tend to want to use it as a base and make variations on, uh, on them from there to get them more into my style. Uh, but then again, it's a really great starting point. So with the materials exported uh, on the right format for the Unity HDRP, I went into Maya and actually textured uh, parts of the model. Um, yeah, as you might think, unwrapping this beast of a model is just a whole lot of work. So I got some corners and did a lot of automatic unwrapping, uh, but it works in the scene for now. Um, yeah, with such a good material base, you won't even notice it from a distance. I went back into Unity, made the materials and saw how it looked, made some tweaks, got back and forth again and just see how the castle grow into the final version. So when I was setting up the scene I thought it was a little bit too barren with just a castle and I wanted some foliage in there. And I like to do some um, stylized foliage uh, in a scene that has quite a realistic texture set to just the offset and I thought it would help to just draw the attention towards the castle. And I found a great package on the Unity Assets Store by Artkovsky. Uh, it's the Illustrated Nature Pack, and I used a free sample uh, just to do address uh, to set address this scene. I will leave a link in the description below to his Unity Assets Store, store page. His full package with more trees and more foliage is absolutely amazing. You should check it out. Um, yeah, and that foliage helped me to get uh, a little bit more of a scene that looked a little bit more realistic and alive than just 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 a castle in the middle. So after the scene and the model were set up in Unity, I played around with the lighting and see if I could get the same angle and lighting as I had in the original render 10 years ago. Um, I managed to get close, <laughs> but it's way different in real time than it was in V-Ray. Uh, but still I'm pleased with the results. So here they are, both next uh, next to each other, side to side, and uh, we can uh, take a closer look at the differences between the models. Um, it's really funny, I didn't pay any attention to poly limits or tries or whatever, and I came to almost the exact amount of polygons uh, as the initial model from 10 years ago. Um, the initial render had 260,000 tries, and the new model has 266,000 tries. Um, yeah, so it's close to a modern game level or character. Um, for example, uh, like one of the one of the big enemies in um, Horizon Zero Dawn has hundred thousand or even more triangles. So uh, yeah, this could totally go for a modern day game level. Um, yeah, if you take a closer look um, in, in, with the wireframe on and in the model itself, you can see where the differences are. Um, where I had a lot of unnecessary polys in, in, in the areas like on the domes, on the top, on the spires, on the spheres. Uh, I managed to draw them a little bit back and uh, have a better poly flow uh, overall and have more characteristics in the building as well. Um, so yeah, um, 
I'm really pleased with the uh, with the difference. Um, it's not the it's not actually finished yet. Uh, there are some things I wanted to do differently, or uh, there are things I could do as a next step in this process. And uh, most of that is texture work because the model itself is quite okay. I could like unwrap some uh, areas like the spire or the or the towers and get them into Substance Painter and make more custom materials so that they are more unique. Um, that's a great way to improve this one. Uh, another one is that I wanted to do is like uh, doing decals on Unity. I might do a separate video on that in the future on decals as a, as a whole, uh, but I could add uh, some wear tear, some dirt, some like green spots where the wall has colored or uh, maybe missing bricks or that the plaster is broken or cracks or whatever. I want to do them initially as decals and put them against those big tileable textures to break them up. Yeah, and I would definitely get it into a little bit more of a realistic setting in Unity with uh, maybe some baked lighting and uh, yeah, see how it looks if we walk around. Um, but yeah, in the time constraints that I had of making this video, I'm quite pleased with the results and uh, yeah, next time I will make it a little bit smaller of a project to get it on time for the video. I had a blast making this model, it reminded me of what I did back in college, like pulling all-nighters to get my assignments done and uh, yeah, there was a little bit of pressure on it which I enjoyed in the end. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next one. Um, for the next video, I will be talking about texture specifically. Um, just to talk you through about how textures have changed over the years, what kind of techniques you could use, uh, how much impact it has on your uh, game's visuals. Uh, and I will do that with demonstrations as well, with a new model and some new textures. So thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to comment down below what you think, uh, what you would like to see in the future videos. Uh, if you'd like to be notified when they come up, uh, consider subscribing and ringing the bell icon. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.